All righty. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the webinar tonight. We're going to be talking about how to manage threatened uh, SBX credit spreads. All right. Perfect. Very good. Okay. So uh, this is uh, a webinar that I uh, put together uh, this month, and it really came about based on the type of market that we've had this year, which is a pretty strong bear market and definitely challenged my ability to, to uh, manage these trades. And so I learned a lot this year and um, hopefully I'll be able to pass it on to you guys and not go through the pain that I did um, with managing these. But uh, in any case, uh, so let's get started here. Okay. All right. So the first thing is what can you expect? And uh, that is, I'm going to show you how you can make consistent returns monthly based on margin capital at risk by adjusting trades without taking large losses and make profitable turn uh, returns month over month. Okay. Uh, what you're going to learn today is how I went from taking uh, zero DTE trades uh, and, you know, taking losses, three X losses, which are, are typical stop losses for zero DTE. And uh, from that to going to very few losses, uh, in several months. Okay. And the way that, it, the way that, it, that I do that is just because, you know, now I have a, a way basically to exit trades that are not going to get me in trouble. Okay. And, and not take large losses. And we'll talk more about that. How to identify the strikes and strike prices that will, <clears throat> that you will use to increase your chances of profitability. How best to mitigate a trade that is threatened, the capital requirements to manage in the money and out of the money credit spreads. And this is really important. And we'll talk a lot about that. And the best time to widen uh, spreads to gain an edge on a position. All right. So with that, I'm asking you to stay with us until the end. We have a, a special bonus for you guys. And uh, we'll talk about that uh, towards the end of the, the webinar here. Uh, additionally, I'm going to ask you to turn off all your distractions, focus on, you know, what we're going to be talking about. I think, I think for you, the, there's going to be a lot of valuable information that you can use like immediately. And uh, also we're going to have a Q and a session. There's a Q, there's a special Q and a section in the, in the chat area. Uh, and I'm going to ask you to uh, put your questions there. Okay. Uh, towards the end of the webinar. And I promise you that I'm going to answer all your questions, um, but we just want to get through the material and be able to uh, be able to get through it and then answer all your questions. Okay. I promise. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to ask is why you're here. Okay. And I put together like three reasons why you would be attending this webinar. Reason number one is you're interested in learning new strategies that'll take your trading performance to the next level so that you can finally leave your nine to five career behind. Okay. That's number one. Number two is you've seen, heard about, read about others making money trading, and you know, you can do it too, but you just are not seeing your account grow fast enough based on your goals. And number three, uh, you've tried different trading strategies that you thought, okay, this is it only to discover it's not getting you to the place of consistent trading results. All right. So I'm going to put up all three here, and then I'm going to uh, put a poll here. Okay. So you can see it and I'm asking you just to let me know which one of these areas that you think that you're closest to, or, you know, all four. Okay. So I'm going to leave this poll up here and wait till you guys respond. I'm getting some responses here. Okay. Very good. Okay. I'll leave that up there for a few minutes while you guys track that and uh, we'll move on here. So again, Interested in learning new strategies, desire to see your account grow month after month and find the right strategy that provides consistent trading results. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm, I'm just a regular guy and um, I live in Puerto Rico with my wife and my kids are pretty much scattered in different places <laughs> in the U S and they're, uh, they're there in the middle there. And then my parents, and that was a MBA event that I attended long, long time ago. All right. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, let's start out with having some attention to mindset. Okay. Really, really important as a trader. The first thing is imagine what it would feel like if most of your trades were winners month after month. And obviously you're going to have losses. Okay. But the consistency is what really matters, right? Month after month, and it would be confirmed by watching the size of your account grow 
at the same time. Number two is becoming the trader that no longer takes large losses, but consistently trades according to a proven trade plan that is profitable over time, allowing you to grow your account month over month. I do have a trade plan and uh, I've, I've passed it out for free. You know, we have a, uh, we have a place that you can download that and it, it works really, really well. And, and actually over, over this, uh, over this time period, I'm certainly going to be making updates to that plan <clears throat> with what I've learned this year. Okay. All right. So before we get into the real technical part of the presentation, let's talk exactly what these trades are okay and these are uh, spx credit spreads um, i know some most of you probably know this but uh there's there's probably going to be people here that uh, don't know what credit spreads are so let's go over that real quickly uh, so we get through this and have some kind of understanding what they are all right so what is it a credit spread is a combination of two puts and two calls where the put or call that is sold is more expensive than the put or call that is bought and these are called verticals, okay? Because they're 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 two calls, you know, that are that are on top of each other, or two two puts on top of each other, and that's why they're called verticals. And the the what you're doing is you're actually selling uh, the trade before you buy it, okay? And and you're selling it, you know, you're selling one you're selling one position, uh, and you're buying the other one, okay? And uh, the one that you're, you're selling is the one that's more expensive. And so that way you get a credit when you actually put on the trade, right? So this is kind of the format. This is the format of the position. And these are, these are in Thinkorswim with TD Ameritrade. And so what you're doing here is you're actually, if you're, if you're looking at it, you're selling one contract here and the expiration is 29 August, 22. Uh, here's the position that you're selling 4050. Okay. So you're selling the 4050 put, buying the 40 put, all right? And it's called a bull spread and you receive 50 cents uh, on that trade times the multiplier, which is a hundred, uh, which would be $50, okay? So that's what you would receive uh, on this trade when you put on the trade, okay? The trade is considered to be a high probability trade. And the reason for that is because you don't have to be exactly right um, when, you, when you trade this, or you don't have to get the direction exactly right. Uh, it's based on a range, and as long as the range is not breached, you'll make money, okay? All right, so let's talk a little bit about risk-reward because a lot of people like to have a better uh, reward than risk, right? In this case, it's the opposite. Because it's a high-probability trade, you kind of lose some of the risk-reward. And so the risk is, is that you have to risk $1,000, and this is for what's called a 10-wide spread, right? So 40-50 uh, minus 40, 40 is 10. And so with that, it's, it's, it's actually uh, $1,000 that you have to uh, put up as margin and then you receive $50. So basically what you're doing is you're receiving that $50 and the risk on this trade is $950 because you get that credit. Okay. All right. The max loss is $1,000 again, minus the $50. All right. So we got that out of the way. Uh, and again, you'll be able to ask any questions that you have uh, out there. And uh, okay, I'm glad you guys are putting up the questions. Okay, we are going to go through those questions. Awesome. All right. So let's talk about the rate of decay or decay in options. Okay, because this, these are, this is really, really important. And uh, what it is, is that when an option, an option is not like a, a stock. Okay, a stock you can buy or sell and you keep it forever and ever and ever. All right, until the, the company goes private. With, with, a, with an option, you're actually uh, selling or buying an instrument that has a limited lifespan, okay? And so let's talk about that lifespan here. So from 60 days to 33 days, an option will decay at a rate of 34%. From 33 days to five days, the rate of decay is 57%. And you can see here how it graduates, right? And from five days to expiration, it's 100%. So the, 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 the greatest amount of change, you know, the rate of change happens in the last five days of, of, a, of an option. And if we're talking about five days, you go to zero DTE, right? That's, that's even a much, much faster decay because by the end of the day, that, that, uh, that option is gone. All right. And so that's why there's a lot of popularity with, with uh, zero DTE. All right, so let's talk about the profitability factors in options. 
and this is really important as well implied volatility so the ideal setup is that when 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 implied volatility or volatility is high and it goes down what happens is the premium prices go down okay and so you want to be in a trade initiate initiate the trade when the volatility is higher than when it's lower okay all right number two is theta theta is actually the rate of decay it's part of the the greeks in um in options all right and the rate of decline and the value of the option due to the passage of time. Basically, that's that's what it is. And so uh, that's that's your rate of, of, of decay and it's called theta. And the third uh, profitability factor is market direction. So if you're if you're trading, you, you can put both sides of a trade on in a in a vertical. OK, either you're putting on the pull, the put side or you're putting on the call side for the put side. You want the market to go up for the call side. You want the market to go down. Right. And so. If you're putting on a bull spread or a put spread and the market's going higher, that's that's working in your favor. If it's going lower, it's not working in your favor and vice versa for calls, all right? Okay, so those are the three profitability factors and the greatest of which is actually uh, theta, okay? Because that really causes the decay and if you're selling options, that's how you make money. All right, and actually if you're buying options, uh, that decay goes against you and so uh, you have to be much more right on the position uh, on on the direction of the trade than you would on uh, than you would have to uh, with selling. All right, so let's talk real quick about uh, some guidelines that I use for risk management. Okay, uh, number one, you first always want to use uh, want to have a plan. All right, uh, and uh, it, it it should include exit uh, criteria, trade size, composition, etc. All right. <clears throat> Secondly. Uh, you want to determine your max loss, and we talked about that, and risk reward. Number three, you want to trade no more than 20% of your credit, uh, credit margin at risk. So if you have a $10,000 account, you really don't want to trade more than 20% or uh, $2,000 in that account uh, when you're making your trades because credit spreads require a lot of margin uh, at risk, and you, won't, you don't want to overdo it. Okay. Uh, also, you don't want to go more than 2% loss in, in, in your total uh, trade capital. Uh, for highly trending markets, as I mentioned before, you position your trade uh, along the trend if you can. Size your trades to ensure emotions are not part of the decision-making process. I always say trade small, trade often, you know, based on the capital at risk that you have. That way, you know, the, the smaller you trade, basically the less emotional strain that you have on, on trading, okay? And it really helps. Okay, so let's go with pre and post-market routines. Uh, so, so first of all, it's really important to understand support and resistance levels. The best way, the best tool to use for that is Fibonacci retracement and extension tools. Look it up if you don't, if you've never heard of that. Um, but those are, those are great tools to use. And I've, I've done a lot of webinars, uh, that, that incorporate that. Uh, so you can go out to my channel as well and, and, uh, you know, look up those, uh, look up those tools, understand how the U S dollar treasury rates and volatility affect the SPX. Um, because, uh, you know, those, those are things that, that can really affect the direction of the market as well. Understand short term and long via, uh, first of all, ES futures, because futures trade overnight, uh, six days a week. And, uh, and understand uh, short term and long term trends. Uh, I'm sorry. And always be prepared to place trades based on your trade plan. All right. Okay. So post market routine. Uh, it's good for you to re review your daily activities uh, when, you're, when you're trading and uh, what needs to change or not change. In, in that in that process and uh, this list gives you a good example for what to look for uh, in terms of uh, what you're doing in your uh, post market routine okay all right since we're going to talk a little bit about or a lot about uh, zero DTE I always want to talk about pattern day trader and uh, this is really important if you have an account that's less than twenty five thousand dollars uh, you can get restricted from trading SPX, okay? And there's other ways, other other ways to trade outside of SPX, but with stocks, uh, ETFs, if you buy, basically, if you buy a um, a position and sell it the same day, that's you know that's a day trade, and you you can only have three day trades within a five day period, or else your account gets uh, restricted, okay? So uh, if you have a twenty five dollar a $25,000 account 
ab uh, that and above, then you don't need to worry about uh, PDT. Okay. All right. How to avoid uh, being flagged? Because now it's it's much more restrictive. Uh, before they would give you a pass. You know, if you if you traded three three day trades within five days, uh, they would they would uh, you know basically give you a, a free pass, and then they reset it, and they would do that three times in a year. Now it's just one time. You don't get to reset it. You'll have to move to another broker if you uh, if you if you uh, get restricted on PDT. All right, it's really important to to understand that. Um, the best way to get around that, and and I showed you here a couple ways here. The best way is to trade ES futures, uh, you know, ES um, futures spreads options basically, and I trade those you know consistently just because overnight you can actually manage those trades on SPX. Uh, after four o'clock uh, or four fifteen, uh, you can't manage, uh, you know, those trades. They're, you know, they're stuck, and uh, you have to wait until the the opening of the trading session, uh, the daily trading session, to actually uh, manage those. Okay, all right. So let's move on here. All right, now we're going to get into the meat of the of the webinar here and talking about managing threatened trades. So basically, what we're going to talk about is out of the money and in the money. Okay, uh, calls and puts, uh, and we're mostly going to be talking about puts here, and because just because on calls you're you're doing the same thing, all right. So same strikes, lower strikes, and widening strikes, or you know uh, when you widen your spreads. Uh, so those are the three characteristics uh, that we're going to be looking at, and how to manage these uh, these positions, all right. Okay, so first thing. We're going to talk about is zero DTE. So let's let's go through zero DTE and how to how how this trade this is basically a trade plan and how I trade these positions. So basically, my entry I enter typically the first five minutes of of a uh, position in a position and I use a ten wide spread. All right, I see you, you know I, I put up here five to thirty because there's variations on different traders and I'm just going to tell you what I do. The premium that I use basically is between 50 to 60 cents. Okay. And, um, you know, again, wider spreads, you, you get, you get more distance to the market, but I'll show you some statistics here on what the best, you know, the best use of those, uh, those uh, spreads are and, and how to use them. Okay. All right. Exit and take profit. I do like to close the positions before the end, but I work with a lot of traders that don't have $25,000 accounts, so they they prefer to uh, leave them open until they expire. Okay, and that way there's no uh, there's no PDT on there. But uh, you know, if there's any chance that uh, we're going to get uh, stuck, I just close those trades um, and uh, and then just move on. All right. Okay, expiration, uh, we talked about that, uh, and then uh, trade that's threatened, all right? So I'm gonna say here, if you don't have enough margin to, to manage, you know, to manage trades that you widen, uh, and we're gonna talk about widening and, and the cost of that, uh, then I would really recommend that you use a 2X or 3X short strike stop loss. And what that means is, is that um, if you put on a position that's 50 cents, right? And the position uh, goes against you, and the, and you see the premium going from 100 to 150. Uh, the 2x is 100, right? And the 3x is 150. And so you'd want to have a stop loss no no greater than 3x, so that you know you can stay solvent. You know, remember if you put on a uh, if you put on a, a 10 wide spread, one contract, your max loss can be a thousand dollars. Okay, so you don't want that to happen. All right. What I've been doing now too is rolling trades that that go against me, and uh, I'm really going to talk a lot about that 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 portion of it, so that you really understand how to manage those trades if if they do go against you, and it, and it, and you can do it for you know zero DTE, seven DTE, monthlies, all those things, and and manage them basically the same way. Okay. All right. So also, you know, one of the things that you that you really need to to stick by is not allowing these trades to go in the money, right? You always want to uh, manage a threatened trade that's that's out of the money, and we'll we'll have some criteria to uh, to go through that. Okay, all right. So let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about putting on these trades here. Now here uh, I'm showing the green is actually calls 
and the red is um, puts. These are five wide, 10 wide, and 15 wide. So this is zero DTE for on, on a 22 VIX, right? Which is in this, this year, with, it's pretty low. Right now we're around 30. And so what I wanna share here with you is that on a five wide spread, you're only one point, on your put side, you're only 1.2% away from the market, okay? On a VIX, that's 22, that, that's at 22. For calls, that's even less than 1%. All right. On the 10 wide, you go all the way up to 1.7 and 1.2 on the calls. And then on the 15 wide, you go 1.9 to 1.4. So you can see here you have a nice big change from 5 to 10, but not so much from 10 to 15. And so when I researched this, this information, it really is not worth adding an additional $500 in margin for one contract for trading uh, these positions. Okay. So uh, I was trading 15 wide and I went back to trading 10 wide because it just doesn't make any sense. You don't, you don't get a lot of distance in that, in that uh, position to go to uh, 15 wide. I know people that trade 30 wide, you know, as well. And what happens is you get a di diminishing return as you, as you go wider and wider uh, out there and it just doesn't make any sense. Okay. So this is now a 27 VIX, which is not that far from 22, but you can see here that we went from, we went from 1.7 to, I'm sorry, 3.3. And uh, it makes a big difference. It does make a big difference uh, in the volatility. All right. Okay. So now we're going to talk about all the different ways to manage these trades here. Okay. So the first one I'm sharing is zero DTE. And you have same strikes and next day when you roll, right? So I'm putting up here a position that is basically been, has been threatened. Okay. So if you put on this position uh, and it's, and it's uh, 50 cents here, it's all moved up all the way to 245. Now, remember I talked about three X or two X and three X. So we're way beyond that now. Okay. And I can tell you that when you're trading zero DTE, this happens quite a bit. Okay. You go past the, you know, the, the three X and you have to take a stop loss and you take a loss. All right. And it really does cut into your, uh, cut into your profits. And so in this case, I'm just sharing here that, that we went up to uh, 245. Okay. And the market was at 3580. And so we are, and, and this is the short strike here. Okay. So you have a 3575, 3565 uh, position. And you're only five five points away from breaching or going in the money in this position. So uh, at that point, basically you want to roll the trade. And so under these conditions, and this is later in the day. So so when when the position gets close to the money earlier, you'd have a smaller credit. Okay, and uh, it's I'm sorry, you'd have a larger credit. I'm sorry, your, your position would be large, you know, higher than 245. It'd probably be like $3 or $4. Okay. If it's earlier in the day. So this is later in the day because the risk is lower, right? That it's going to, it's going to breach. Obviously if it's, if it's uh, close to the money uh, during the middle of the day, there's a higher chance that it's going to breach. Okay. Rather than at the end of the day. All right. So in this, in this case here, we did a roll for the same strikes going to the next day. Right. And I was able, you know, able to get, you know, using the same strikes, I was able to get $1 and 75 cent credit. That means when you roll the trade, you'll receive $1 and 75 cents per contract. Okay. Not bad, but the next day the market could continue going down. Right. And then you'd, you'd be, uh, in the money already. All right. So let's move on here. <clears throat> so in this case, same strikes, you get a 175 cent credit, All right? Now we're going to rolling the position down and moving it to the next day. So in this case, I moved it down I can, and I could probably have gotten a credit a little bit lower, right? But um, in any case, you understand that uh, the credit is much lower than having the same strikes, but we were able to push the strikes down 25 points, okay? So you're de-risking more of that trade. It's still kind of close. It's only 25 points away, but you're still able to uh, lower the position and still get a credit on it. Okay. 
All right. So roll down 25 points and a 35 cent credit. Here we go again now. Now this time we're going to widen the spread. So we're going to go from a 10 wide position, a 10 wide credit spread, and we're going to go to a 15 wide credit spread. And this is what happens. So in this case, if we, you know, I can tell you, I don't have it here, but if we would have uh, had a credit here, the credit, you know, with the same strikes, the credit would have been much, much higher. Okay. Uh, but we're not really looking for credit. We're looking to de-risk the position because the trade is threatened. So, so in this case, we were able to bring it down from 3575 down to 3530 by widening. So that takes it much further away than, uh, than the, than having it, you know, with not widening the position. So that's what it gives you. However, you got to keep in mind that you are paying, you know, $500 per contract of margin in order to, in order to, uh, to do this. Okay. All right. And I'm going to illustrate this, uh, with a trade and, and show you how that margin builds up very quickly when you're getting into, uh, worse and worse conditions of, of, uh, you know, of a threatened trade. Okay. So here we roll down 45 points and widen the spread and, and got a 15 cent credit. All right. Now we're going to look at rolling the trade out for two days instead of one day. And in this case, basically you can see here that with the same strikes, the, the, uh, the credit that you received is, is higher going out two days rather than one day. Remember one day it was 175. Now it's 215, right? So that's another characteristic, you know, as, as long as you're still out of the money, you know, and you push that trade out a little bit further, you get a little bit more credit at the same time. Let me see here. Okay. So rolling two days out instead of one gives you a 40 cent higher credit in this case. All right. Okay. So here now we're going to go down and we're going to widen that spread. Okay. Two days out and for 35 cent, 35 cent, um, credit, you go down to 35.15. I mean, that's a long, that's a long way. Okay. So it's giving you much more distance in, in this case. So here you're rolling down two days. Widening gives you 60 points for 35 cents. Okay. And if you lower that credit even more, you go down to 15 cents. You're actually, you can actually get a hundred points away from the, the, the market. Right. So what does that tell you? It kind of tells you to say, if you're going to roll a trade and, and you really, really want to get it out of the way, you know, you're going to, you, you want to widen that spread as much as possible that you can, right. To get it away so that, you know, the next day you're not going to have a problem having that threatened trade. And if you do, you know, and the, and the market goes against you, chances, the probability is, is that it's not, it's still not going to go into the money. And you're going to be able to roll that trade without widening it again and, and push it down further. Okay. So, you know, this year, I mean, I, I was learning all this and, uh, instead of, instead of really being more aggressive and, and driving the, my positions down, you know, I kind of did a piecemeal and, uh, and it hurts, it, it hurt me because I'd have to, you know, I'd have to uh, roll the trade again and roll the trade again, you know, so I wouldn't lose, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. All right. So, uh, so this way, what you want to do is, is, you know, especially if you're starting out, you know, just do one contract one at a time. If you get in trouble, you know, push it down as far as you possibly can and just keep one position on. And, um, and the chances are, is that you're going to get out of that trade very, very quickly. Okay. All right. All right, so let's move on. So here you're rolling down two days, um, widening the position by five points, and you and you have a hundred SPX points. So if you would if you would have widened it ten points or fifteen points, right, it would have it would have gone down quite a bit more. But but again, you have a diminishing return when you're when you're uh, widening these positions. All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, in the money uh, uh, trades, in the money positions. Okay. All right. So uh, here. Now we have a 3580 again, that's where the market is, right? And our position is 3590, 3580. So now we are in the money, okay? So here in the same conditions, but being in the money, your, your credit is $6.10 compared to what it was 
when it was out of the money that was a dollar seventy five. So so you're already deep, <laughs> deep in uh, deep in trouble. Okay, and that's again that's why you don't want to be in the money on these positions, right? So let's go through this and and what can happen here. So now. If we wanted to roll this position with the same strikes, you're still going to pay a 90 cent debit. Okay. There's no credit here. You're going to pay, a, you're going to pay for it. Okay. Additionally, if you're, if you want to roll it down, so let's go through that. So let's roll it down. Okay. Now you want to roll it down to where we had a small credit for being out of the money. Now you're, you're paying a debit of $3.30. So for every, for every contract that you have, you're, you're basically playing, paying $330, okay. To, uh, to, re to recover that or, or keep that position alive. So that can get very, very expensive, especially when you start, uh, especially when you start widening trades as well. Okay. Okay. So in this case, you went in the money, the spread is very expensive to roll down now in the money, roll down and widened. Okay. In this case, we're going to widen the position. And so what do you get here? You get 15 points, basically 15 points down, you know, to get basically a zero credit on it. And, and, and so you can see here that it's, it's really not giving you much here of protection, very little protection here. Okay. All right. So now we're going back to zero DTE out of the money and lowering the strikes and working it and, and sending it out one week out instead of one or two days. Okay. So here we have the same situation, uh, 250, and we widen this. We we actually roll it out, and not widen the position, right? And so this gives us quite a bit of distance here. So from uh, let's see if I have that. So rolling it out a week can provide additional distance, okay? And it allow you to actually put on a uh, a call spread as well, and that way you know you're you're covered, but. You're going from 3690 to 36, uh, 3620, and so that's 70 points away. And again, it gives you room to be able to, or more room to to uh, to manage that position going forward as well. Okay, so that's just one of the benefits of of rolling out a little bit further. And again, you have to be uh, out of the money here. All right, so in this case, we widened it and pushed it out a week. Here you have, you're actually going down 120, yeah, 100, over 100 points here now, in this case, when you widen it and, and you push it out, uh, and you push it out a week. And so, and that gives you, again, additional distance, and that's what you want. And you get a credit on this as well. Okay. Alrighty. All right. So now let's talk about 7DTE. So 7DTE is very, very similar, or it's a little different than 0DTE, than but it has a lot of the same characteristics. Okay. So again, you want to enter small positions, 10 wide spreads you, using multiple expirations. And when I say multiple expirations, so instead of taking, let's say you want to put five contracts down, you, you set it out and you put it for a week, right? Uh, instead of doing, uh, instead of doing that, what, what I would recommend is you put a, one contract down or two contracts down on Monday, another contract down on Wednesday, and then maybe two contracts on Friday. So what you're doing is you're spreading out the risk when you're trading uh, 70 TE. Okay. What I use is a delta of 10 to 12 for bull spreads and 7 to 10 for bear spreads. And the reason they're different is because I want to have more distance on the call side because inherently the call side is close is always closer to the market based on the delta than the foot side. Okay. And I think we talked a little bit about that. Take profit is you want to take profit for 50 to 80 80% uh, of your credit received. Okay. And that's, you know, conservative. A lot of times I'll wait for 10 cents, you know, to get it, to get out. And uh, if your positions have already been rolled, you want to target less profit on that. Uh, just because uh, typically once you roll the position, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's already more risky. Than, than putting a, a new position on, right? Adjustment uh, or roll. I like to use 40 cents, you know, I'm sorry, 40 points or more of a threatened trade on the short strike. So you want to, you know, if you're if you're getting, you know, close to that 40, those 40 points, you want to, you know, at 60 points and 60 to 40 points, you know, you want to get ready to actually, you know, roll that position and figure out how you're going to do that. Okay. Nobody likes to roll a trade just because you're delaying profit. Um, and th those are one of the emotional things you have to battle. 
but uh, but in any case, you, you want to be prepared mentally and uh, and roll that trade before it gets closer and closer to the money. Especially if you have a market that's aggressively moving down, like we did this year, you want to you want to you know you want to have time to be able to put your positions on and and roll them, okay, and and not be in the money, okay. And then stop loss. I really roll positions, especially the the you know I don't take losses on on put spreads, but on call spreads I do from time to time. Just because they're much more, much harder to uh, to manage than they are the uh, the put put positions. All right, so let's go into a 70 TE trade. Oops. In this case here, we put on a put spread uh, with a dollar ten credit, and then a call spread with a 95 cent credit. Okay, and, and typically they're you know with the deltas they're going to be you're going to get less credit for the call spread. You know, as as I mentioned before. Okay, in this case. You know, I legged in, and you have a 300 plus point range between the two. Okay, so so, and what I'm doing here is I, I created a you know a pretty worst case scenario in in rolling trades, right? Okay, so update number one, basically, um, we we put that position on, and the market went down. Okay, and you can see here that that 95 cent credit for the call spread, we had 15 cents here, and so it was ready to be closed. You know. So this this trade got closed, and um, we moved on here. So basically, we closed at a 10 cents. We left the the put spread alone just just because it wasn't uh, it wasn't uh, uh, threatened at this time. And so after that, we uh, we went ahead and put on a call spread, another call spread, you know, lower this time just because the the market was moving lower, and. Uh, you know, left the left the, uh, the 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 bull spread alone. All right. Okay. Update three here. Uh, the following day, the call spread created <laughs> it went down again, and so you know, basically here you can see here it it uh, it was it was uh, close to ten cents. Uh, so we we closed this uh, position again. Let's see if we closed it. I think so. Yeah, we closed it. Yeah, we closed the position, and then the market dropped again. All right. And so, so this time we had to adjust the put spread, okay? Because now it was being threatened. So with the put spread, we rolled it from 36.80, 36.70 to 36.30, 36.20. We received a 30 cent credit, and then on the on the uh, call side, we added another call spread. So this is a third call spread that we added in in this one position. All right. So you can you can see here that even though we are you know rolling these trades we're collecting credit along the way every single uh, every single path that we do we're able to collect credit and uh, it's much easier to collect it on two sides of of the trade you know the call side and the and the put side because you know one basically uh, helps the other uh, so that you can continue uh, earning credit on these on these positions right okay so this time we push it out for one week okay and so uh, update number five here right more downside again and rolled we had to roll again both sides now this time you know the call side wasn't breached but because the the uh, put side uh, we would we're gonna have to uh, roll it again and so you want to keep the same margin right you don't want to you don't want to be in different expirations. So we rolled the call side and the put side at the same time, all right? And then what do we have here? So here, uh, because I didn't get enough distance uh, in the market, you know, I rolled it for 60 points, uh, but I used a debit here. And it was okay because we got a lot of credit from the call side and I didn't mind paying a debit for, uh, for this position. And again, we rolled the, um, we roll the call side, not too much though, because once a market goes down and it's oversold, you can get these rallies that rip really, really hard, okay, and uh, and it'll go right against your call spread, and so you don't you don't want that to happen either, and so you got to be kind of careful with that, all right? Okay, so now we collected another credit for the call side, and so now position update number six here, okay? So here again we had more downside. And now this time we needed to uh, we needed to roll it and widen the position. Okay, so things were getting worse and worse here, right? So uh, now we we roll the positions and 
you know, I pushed him, I, you know, I wanted to push him down as far as I possibly could. And so this time I, I just collected a 15 cent credit. And again, the call side, I collected 70 cent credit, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to keep pushing the call side down because I knew what was going to happen in the end uh, if we kept doing that. And so you got to be careful with the, with the call side, because those are more dangerous to manage as well. I didn't mind managing the, uh, the, uh, the put side, but the call side can be, uh, can be inherently much more dangerous. Okay. So here we took a 15 cent credit and, uh, and pushed it out one day. All right. Cause I looked out actually and it, and, and it, it just didn't make sense to push it out, you know, further and further. Okay. Uh, cause I got a good, a good credit on the roll <clears throat> with, uh, with widening the position. All right. Now, basically what happens is that uh, the market actually rallied. Okay. And it went from 3,500 up to 3,800. Okay. And so it was a good thing that we were able to uh, keep that, you know, keep these uh, positions, the call side uh, above 3,800, but you still, you know, we still had kind of a threatened trade here as well. Right. <clears throat> there was a lot of resistance in that area. And so I was kind of confident to, uh, to keep this thing going. So what happened basically is that we were able to, we were able to close the positions, right? After the, after the, the roll that we did and, uh, you know, we were able to close the, the, the put spread and leave the uh, call spread open until it, uh, it rolled, it didn't roll down it, until the market went down again, you know, somewhat, uh, and we were able to get out for a profit. And so that's really the anatomy here of a, of a, you know, a really aggressive type of scenario that you can get into. But if you have the right tools and you have the right process, you're not going to get into trouble as long as you keep a cool head and you, uh, you manage these trades without letting them get into, uh, into the money. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take you through uh, another aggressive trade uh, that I went through. Okay. And this gives you a little bit of this one, yeah, this one is just a, okay, here it is. Okay. So in this case here was May 18th. All right. And again, I was, I was kind of green to all this, you know, when I was, when I was managing this, but this is one of those days that the market really, really went aggressively against us. All right. Okay. So let's go through it. So, uh, we, you know, I was managing this trade from 518 to 523. Okay. And it was over the weekend, uh, as well. And so I put on the first position and that position was a 39.50, 39.35 put spread. Okay. And so keep in mind that I was at this time, I was still trading 15 wide spreads. So I got 60 cents on this trade. Then what happened uh, from 9.32, basically I put on a call, a call, a call spread. And then I added a put spread uh, to the, uh, to the position for 60 cents as well. Okay. The market kept going down. And so uh, I closed the call spread. Cause I knew that I was going to have to, uh, I was going to have to manage the, uh, the put spread. And, um, and sure enough, I ended up in the money on, on the put spread and then widening the, the position, um, <clears throat> from uh, 15 wide to 25 wide. Okay. Right off the bat. Um, because, um, uh, not so much that I wanted a credit, but I needed to push that position down. So I widened it quite a bit. Uh, to get it down. And I, and I really didn't get it down that much. So, uh, you know, they say luck is, is not a good uh, trading strategy. Well, I got lucky in this one, I'm telling you. So uh, the next thing that happened is that the market kept going down and I had to roll that trade again. And this time I widened it uh, to uh, 40 wide. Okay. So I went from, I went from 25 wide to 40 wide. Okay. Now I was getting in trouble here. So what happened was, is that the market rescued me. Okay. So the market went, you know, way down uh, on a Friday and on a Monday, it went way up and uh, I was able to uh, close that position for 30 cents. All right. So what happened? So initially I had a 15 wide spread. Okay. So two positions and that's 15 wide. And, and that is uh, $3,000 of margin. Okay. And I collected uh, basically a dollar 20. Then on the first roll here, I had to widen the, the spread to 25 wide. And so I went from 2,500, you know, times two to uh, 5,000 in margin here. And then I collected uh, two, $2 and 70 cents. And then the second roll, basically I had to 
create a 40 wide margin. And that was, you know, that cost $8,000 in margin. And, uh, because I, you know, rolled it for a debit, you know, we took, took off a little bit here, uh, but it was uh, 260, uh, 260 here. And then in the end, basically closing it at 30, uh, you know, 30 cents, we received a credit of 230 for that, but it was not a fun trade, right? And you, and you really don't want to get into that type of situation. All right. So this concludes the, uh, the technical portion of the webinar, and I hope you found value in it.